So yeah, let's get to it. I did use a charcoal transfer technique uh, before starting this. That's why the lines look so clean. But um, yeah, I am going to start the acrylic underpainting first and get as detailed as possible. I'm watching YouTube in the background right now. I'm going in with Liquitex Basics. And I'm only doing this just to like seal the graphite. All right, everyone, welcome back to my channel. I have a new video for you guys today. And the title of this painting, I think I'm gonna call it Blood and Chocolate. So this painting was my first official like really deep skin tone. So I was really excited about it. I haven't done a really deep skin tone ever, so I was just like, let's do it, let's go in, you know. I've practiced enough, and it's time to do something really different. And I think I'm probably going to make this like a series where I do like different races, like different ethnic groups, and I don't know, I feel like that would just be like an interesting concept, but let me know what you guys think about that. So to start off this painting, I started off with an acrylic underpainting and I did so much of the acrylic underpainting that it was pretty much done by the time I got to the oils. So that was pretty good for me. Um, I haven't painted with acrylics in so long. When I paint, like, I know it looks like I'm going super fast, but I'm like meticulously picking out colors and making sure everything looks right. And it's really hard. I don't know if I could ever do like a tutorial because I feel like I'm still learning how to do a lot of this stuff. So I feel like I don't know really what, it, what I'm doing. I kind of just look at it and see like, mm, yeah, this looks like the color. And I just kind of put it on the canvas. And if it's not the color, then I'll end up changing it. And you guys will see that in the video because I was like looking at my painting and I was like, hmm, I think I need to change the color. And then I screwed up. <laughs> I screwed up so bad, but you'll see it in the video. I actually recorded it. <laughs> I'm laughing because I screwed up so bad. <laughs> I put like too much purple, but it's fine. It's coming anyway. Oh yeah, and I hope you guys enjoyed that little intro where I sprinkled a little ASMR in there. I don't know, I just really like the sound effects that painting makes and you can like get really creative with it and just, I don't know, because painting is such a relaxing hobby, like you can just really get lost in all the sound effects and just really be creative with it. Some people don't like it, but if you did enjoy it, let me know. If you didn't enjoy it, let me know as well. And I'm actually really proud of this painting. Like, after letting it dry for a few days, I really started to see the color and, like, the richness of it. And it's, it was really hard for me to get, like, a good photograph of this painting because there's so much glare. And I guess because there's, like, still, like, wet oil paint on it. But after it dried and it mat, started to mat up a little bit, you could really see the color and the vibrancy. So I was, like, so proud of it. And it looked just like the reference photo, which I was going for. That's what I do in like all my paintings. Like, I love picking a reference photo that has so much detail and so much like strength and just so powerful. And I want to be able to capture all of it, which is, it's kind of like getting into photorealism and hyperrealism, even though I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm definitely not there yet. There are way more realistic painters out there, but that's what I try to aim for just to get as much detail as possible and really train my eye to see color and see values and see details because it's something that people say artists are talented but it's not something that I feel is talent it's something that you practice and that you learn over time oil painting comes with like practice and not even oil painting it's just painting in general when you're trying to paint realistically 
you kind of just have to look at it enough or practice enough in order to train your eye to see different values and different colors. So the best practice or the best tutorial that somebody can give you is to give yourself enough time to practice on your own and just do studies like how I do. All of my work is basically just a recreation of the photographer's work. It's the photographer's camera shot or it's the model's feature that I'm just implementing into an artistic form. So I never try to take credit for anything that you, you guys see me create because it's not really mine. I'm just using it as a study and just putting it, bringing it back to my canvas in an artistic way. And then the white of the shirt, which is pretty therapeutic. folds and the crinkles in the shirt. I think that's a Nike shirt by the way. Just kidding. I don't know. It's probably from Walmart. But uh, yeah. Here you can see where I made that mistake I was talking about earlier. Well, I wouldn't say it's like a mistake but I was like going back over the cheek with like a darker color. Like I was trying to make the skin more warm so I started to use like red and purple undertones. And I was like, holy crap, this looks so bad. <laughs> and I had to fix it off camera. I had to go back over it with like brown and like fix it. So that part is like cut out of the video because I was like panicking. I was like, oh crap, I just ruined it. So yeah, that was fun. And Silver Leaf is like the devil because it is so messy. Y'all don't even know. Like it was all over my carpet. I had to vacuum and all that stuff. I had to vacuum that stuff up. It just wasn't fun. It wasn't the move. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There are no crazy edits on this one because I was pretty proud of this one just by itself and how it looked. So. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Please make sure to give this video a like and subscribe and have an awesome day. Bye.